Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Hey guys, welcome back to Sekiro. Ultimate Guide, and today is Mount Congo Part 1, because it's a fairly long area, arguably probably the longest, and splitting it into two parts just makes it a little bit more digestible and also something something ad revenue. So we're going to start off getting that gatching sugar because it's like a relevant thing, but I'm just going to show you the, the general layout of this area. That bit down there is like Irrelevant dead end. until later. Um, there's like a little kite thing which takes you like a, that's for like a quest. So we go up this mountain, there's this big, um like temple is it's all temples in it it's called senpo temple so, this, so no that's the, the the next part so there's well, that, well, that it house senpo temple mount congo this counts so it's just all temple is this is a temple okay so this is Koro or something i think anyway point is is he's like a friendly tarot guy and uh, we come here later uh basically the peddler guy in ashina outskirts wants help so you send him there and then after you do that, he expands his inventory, so that's pretty good. It's worthwhile doing that because you get access to upgrade materials. Uh, so we just come down here, get these items, and so essentially we get like a skill that lets us take control of this guy later on, and Pop he uh, puts the the kite up, and then you can repel off the kite and it gets you another area, but that isn't until way later in the game. So this area can be quite challenging. The monks are... It's a nice, peaceful walk in the woods with some Buddhist monks and... You'd think being Buddhist monks, that are, I mean, vaguely Buddhist monk looking, that they would at least be somewhat peaceful. Are but... these more the set themselves on fire type? <laughs> <laughs> You're always going to go down that road as a joke as well. So, okay, so you want to sneak around this area into the grass. Um, there's kind of like, it's... So that way, you know, they don't see if you just run up the, the pathway, they'll see. It's fairly obvious that, but then there's like another bit of a nuance coming up, right? So kill this guy because, or rather this guy and the next, because if you spend any amount of time, they'll turn around and then they'll aggro on you. You don't want that happening. So just murder them in cold blood while you're here. So now you want to jump onto the roof of this. And this keeps you, so there's like a patrol coming up. <laughs> you gain an know, extra two feet of jump. So if you come on the roof here, um... It means that that patrol won't see you, or you can at least like anger yourself so they won't see you. Now, I tried. S dear God, I tried. Right. There isn't a way to stealth this efficiently. Nah. There isn't. There, or if there is, it's again one of those like time is money scenarios. So just take the gatch and sugar and go up this side of the mountain. There's only a couple of items to grab anyway, so it's just not worth it because. These guys, there's so many of them, and if they gang up on you, no matter how good you are at the game, they're just gonna they're gonna kill you, right? So just don't bother. The monks can be quite of a challenge if they uh, gang up on you. And there's like one monk with a stick, and he's like specifically difficult. Anyway, in the middle of this sort of hill, round about this area, as you can see, you want to then sneak over this way, because um, there's some items in this part. This way, we can just like go past all the patrols, and then when they pass you. You can just grab this uh, sugar and then continue on your merry way. Still plenty of time to do this off one gatch and sugar, so you don't need to worry. And then once you're in this part, you're like... Well, I mean, I've got to say you're out of the woods, but strictly speaking, you're still in woods. Out of the woods and into the temple. No, you're still in the woods currently. Like, technically. So yeah. I think I, I missed an item there. I think I didn't Maybe. pick something up. It looks um, like... I think it's a coin purse. 
I don't know what the deal is there, but there is like, I, I, maybe there's like a light or something. Just look through that area like a little bit harder. I don't know why it looks like I went and missed something there, but at least I'm mentioning it now. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, anyway though, now you can come up this way and now none of the monks will see you. You really don't want to fight them. Like, it's pointless. Like, you just you want to get through the game. You want that sweet, sweet serotonin and fighting those monks ain't going to help you. Good brain juices. That's what we are. That's what we're, that's all we want. So we continue on and there's like some bugs, irrelevant though. There's some, there are some monks in this room praying. They won't aggro on you, but don't attempt to like fight them because what you want to do is come around the back here and backstab this guy first of all because you don't want to fight these guys like one on one face to face. It's, you're not going to have a good time and we don't fight any of them face to face in this guide. So just grab this item and then run. They might, sometimes they've aggroed on me after I take that, sometimes they don't. I don't know what the deal is there, but in this case they didn't aggro on me, which is Their eyes shocking. were closed. I don't know how you tell. I'm just going to guess that's what it was. Okay. Their eyes were closed. So this is what I mentioned. I mentioned earlier in the guide about she will show up in various times uh, during the playthrough, but you only really get anything out of her aside from like chatting like the first time if you like do a little pray thing. Otherwise, she's just some exposition, some lore. Okay, so jump up here. This gets you some free delicious emblems. And then there's like... Oh, is this a coin purse? Yeah. And they're, they're useful. Coin purses are good. We, we like coin purses. So we're going to go around the perimeter of this area, get the next bonfire, and then like there's a couple of items. So just in case you type in the comments prematurely, you missed some items! We didn't, right? Although we might have missed an item like well, two minutes ago. Do it anyway. <laughs> For future. <laughs> For the algorithm, just say we missed an item. Yeah. So backstab this guy. Then we uh, take some ungo sugar and then carry on. Yeah, this area is just enemies. Too many. So again, this is one of the, you could stealth it, but why bother when you can literally just go like, pick this and then just run ahead. Like, again, you know, picking your battles, like, we're not fighting hard. We're fighting smart. Is it possible to get the aerial visceral at this point in the game? Uh, what, you mean those two guys down there? No, I mean, is it possible to get the aerial oh, visceral um, skill? Oh, sure, yeah, but it's, it's right. kind of rubbish. It is rubbish, but if you can figure out how it works, then... Yeah, nobody can figure out how it works. No, you do. See when they're in no, the air. Nobody knows, Steve. It's similar to the lightning transfer. That's important. Nobody knows you how that works. You just need to wait for them anyway. to be in the air, and then you jump into the air and visceral them. It's that easy. So, the guy in the la uh, in Ashina Castle that sells you the Iron Fortress um, prosthetic, he also gives you like the mid-air visceral, and it's like, if you're in mid-air when they're in mid-air, you can press R1 and immediately kill them. Yeah. But... You just it's, need to wait for the red dot. It's really difficult to time though. And again, it's not worth it because the guy would... It's too much effort. Why don't you axe and then fang them? Uh, because we don't need to fight them. Oh, okay. But those guys with the double headed staff, we don't fight a single one of them. Fuck it. I take it uh, like the next part, you're just going to run past everything to get into the idol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. So here we are back to... I don't know why I... Gourd seed. Transition in that, but yeah, we've got a gourd seed, so we are gonna upgrade it whilst we're here because it is good practice to just make sure you. Did that say we didn't have any, or did we upgrade it? Like, I doesn't matter. I'm pretty but, sure you upgraded. I mean, I'm pretty sure we got. A, we did get a gourd seed, so you did. Yeah. Pick, you picked up the gourd seed in front of that immortal dude. Yeah. With all the sleeping monks. So now we're going back to the uh, the side of the mountain bonfire and we're gonna just take this little backtrack route now you if it, if it's at all relevant you get a persimmon off this guy uh you need that for like a quest coming up one of the few quests that actually matter so the thing is is you pick up a, pers a persimmon naturally in the guide but if you just so happen to not have one you can get one off this guy now this guy sells some like sells coin purses so if you have any spare cash this is one of the guys that you can buy coin purses off of to bank your uh, money i hate this path so much yeah well i mean the, the route that i've got makes it like somewhat better but there does seem to be an interesting thing where uh, in fact i'll mention it when it comes to it. i'll mention this is the interesting thing okay so when we approach the end bit here be 
slow about it, because this guy, when you get close, will just come down, and then you can backstab him, and he's like marginally harder than the other ones. Then you come over here, you backstab this guy, and yeah, there is an item here. Another gatch and sugar, just throwing them at us. So then we go over here, backstab this guy, and then we do like a cool thing where we jump onto this, and then we shimmy up, and then he inexplicably can't see us. I'm just saying, if this was me, I would have seen him immediately. It's just the wind moving that katana and that human <laughs> along the side of the planks. <laughs> So now we go up this way. Now this takes us back to the bell, remember, in uh, Sheen Outskirts part one or two. Um, the one where you ring the bell to make the game harder? Yes, yeah, so this takes us back there. Um, this also helps us one of the quests. So in order to get the tarot guy to go to the peddler, um, I mentioned that quest, the friendly guy at the start, you need to give him one of these little pinwheels. Um, now if you give him the pinwheel he doesn't want, um, he goes to the peddler, which is what you want him to do. Um, his other quest doesn't actually end in anything substantial, so it's one of those things where it's like, you can get something that doesn't matter or something that does matter, so we're just not even mentioning what the other half of his quest is because there is no point to doing it. Um, because it's like, you get a, uh, you get like a, one of those like unique consumables that just does the same thing as the other consumables in the game. It's totally pointless. What you want is an expe uh, an, uh, an expanded, um, Merchant. Merchant, yeah. So, we got... But obviously we're going to show you how to get the other item. So, as you... When we moved up the uh, the cliff there before coming back here, um, we got the red and white pinwheel. We're going to get the white one now. Now, just to make a point, um, this part of the game, the frame rate's a bit fucky, so just be careful when you're repelling um, over because for some reason, um, I would repel over and the frame rate would, like, dip while I'm in the air and it made grabbing onto the sides really difficult. So there we go, there's the white pinwheel. And that's the one that you want for like, the quest that like, he wants, like he wants the white pinwheel, but just don't give him it. I think you get a persimmon out of it or something like that, do you know? Uh, no. I, I don't even know. I, I just know that it's like, not a relevant item. No, it isn't. Like it doesn't contribute to um, like, any of the trophies, it doesn't, it doesn't contract. It doesn't get you like a, a unique item. There's no armor or anything like that in the game, so it is just a completely pointless thing to give them the white pinwheel. And that's the shortcut to the bell tower, which we Isn't will it? then uh, rest at in a second. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, there seems to be, from this part, no way back to the mountain path that we're on. Um, because, so, the path that you take to get the red and white pinwheel also takes you to the boss, like, over there. I cannot get back to there. I, I have no idea how to get back to there from here, aside from warping to the mountainside bonfire. I, if you know a way how to get back there, tell me, but I could not find it. Spent, like, an hour looking for it. And the, as you saw, we were at the, the bell just there. So if you want the game to be harder, you can ring it. But then if you don't want the game to be harder, you can ring it again. Or unring it. I, I, don't, I don't know what you'd call it. There is. No, nah, but you can mention that uh, later. But uh, if you think the little dip thing, it, it doesn't take you back. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because you can always just warp back to the side of the, the mountain yet. anyway. So it, it's literally irrelevant. So uh, this is us just like doing the same thing, going up the mountain, killing these guys, smoking these meats. These beets? No, meats, not beets. Oh. It's a little Zuckerberg reference for you. How, how is this guy just so... The, the most oblivious person. <sighs> right, now we are about to get on to the boss coming up. Now. There actually just isn't a way to cheese this boss. And good lord, I tried. But, again, it's one of the things where if there is a cheese method, it's just harder than just learning the boss and doing it. Now, with this boss, you absolutely have to get good at deflecting him. But, he's, he's pretty deflectable, all things considered. You can make Kiri counter some of this shit as well. You can, you can. So, the key is, right, is you can't actually do any damage to him. You can only deflect his attacks, and you have to knock him off the side. It's actually a pretty cool boss, actually. 
Um, so what you want to do is you fill up his like posture meter, and then you get to do like a like a power move on him, and it knocks him back. And if he's close to one of the edges, he'll fall off. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Um, so all you need to do is just learn how to parry his attacks, realistically speaking. As you can see, the Makiri counters do. Yep. They put in the work here. Now this this is the the attack you're kind of most looking for because you can deflect like all of these and it'll like put up his posture like a good amount. And also like that attack is a good way for um, like controlling his movements as well because he'll like go for you and then like move behind you as well. So just uh, when his posture meter is get getting high, make sure that you're angling him towards an edge. Just like I'm doing here, he backs towards an edge, and there he goes. Roberto. Yeah. <laughs> he shouts Robert on his way down. In the Japanese, it's Roberto. <laughs> now this should give us the last uh, prayer bead we need to upgrade our HP. Yep, it does. Get that scrap there, and then uh, there's a couple more things we need to do. I think this is where I show you the the quest line, uh, what what you should be doing. Because now that we've got the pinwheel, we can essentially send um, what's his face to the merchant. Yeah, I'm just gonna call him friendly tarot guy because I gen I cannot fucking remember his name. So we're getting mid air prosthetic prosthetic arts, uh, but also like you could use at this point you could also just use your skills as well to upgrade the um, like the amount of emblems you have as well. That's also like a worthwhile if you want to like deviate. Like if you want the more emblems, that's something that you could also get at this stage. So, um, what you do, like, you don't need to, like, purchase anything from him, you just need to, like, go into his menu, and when you're starting, to, like, you go out, that's when you'll start talking to him. So, this is where his, like, quest starts, like, you can, you can start it earlier, quote-unquote, or whatever, but, um, it doesn't really matter, because you wouldn't be able to do it until now, um, or at least until you've done Ashina Castle, but... You know, this stuff like isn't even relevant. Like in the guide, you never need to go to him. No, like, aside you... from like arguably one part, but we'll get to that. So um, that information you gave him there was to do with the salt. Yeah. From the guards that you dropped on the bridge. Or I, I never even gave him the information. Um, no, you told them that um, they were looking for salt. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I've told them yet. You just did, did right I? there. Okay. Okay. That was what it was right there. Now you're going back to tell them about the pinwheel dude, the uh, tarot guy. No, I think now I tell him about the salt. No, he's already just sold the salt. A good lesson here about your business, Bruin, take advantage. Oh, sure, right, now he needs the strong guy. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, salt first, then strong man. So, now, because he wants a strong guy, we're like, well, I just know of a strong guy that needs a friend. That's funny, that, innit? So Isn't now, there a way you can you can send the tarot guy to Dojin or whatever his name is? Uh, yeah, you can send them to Dojin. And then he ends up like red eyed and fucking. But don't send them to Dojin, because yeah. then you lose out on the expanded. No, thing. exactly. Yeah, I'm the just saying it's, it, you can. It's yeah. just like most NPC quests in this game, pointless. So don't give him the white pin. We'll give him the red and white one, and then he's so fucking ungrateful. He's like, didn't even want this one. It's the same thing. Yeah, tell him about the peddler and that he should probably look into indentured servitude. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you've just signed him up for. <laughs> oh, we give a shit. It's not against the code. <laughs> <laughs> it's just looking in the samurai code, but like, as it turns out, it's not against the code. Yeah. It's not even not in the book. It explicitly it's says even, it. It's not even like samurai code. It's just a notebook with the pages like barely held together and it's just dad's rules. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. He's here now. And um, I don't, I can't remember at what point. Clearly happy in his servitude. So if you pay for the information, this is the information that like if you already have the flame barrel, then he then gives you like a free oil. Yeah. So now he should have an expanded inventory. He does. So now you can buy like an amount of um, upgrade materials off him, which is obviously extremely useful and relevant. Considering some of the upgrades are mandatory to unlock future upgrades for other tools. However, it also shouldn't be a huge issue because all the upgrades that we need in the game, um, we actually we don't need to farm for anything or anything like that. And because we're not even picking up items, 
you should just have them in your inventory without even need to buy them anyway. So they are fairly rare drops, at least. Uh, for the ones that we need, we're yeah. actually not. We'll need some gunpowder, I'm pretty sure. Gunfort is where you start getting the good drops. But that is it for this episode. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.